In my effort to clean up, I stumbled upon some very old stash. I found my ancient box of scraps and swatches from about, well, 2015 apparently. I found my packets of Brian Trowbridge swatches that I had gotten in 2015, which makes them almost six years old now. Um, so I figured that they probably didn't carry the same fabric anymore, and I should probably either do something with them or get rid of them. Now, getting rid of them would be easy and smarter, maybe, but I would feel one majorly guilty for throwing away such gorgeous fabric, and two, majorly guilty for throwing away fabric. So, I've decided to find a project that would utilize small scraps of fabric from a vague color palette, but nothing like crazy matchy-matchy, and would be useful to me. So, my first project with this, I decided to do pieced pockets. Now these are for late 18th century um, tie-on pockets, and I only have one pair. And I love that one pair, it's really big and really useful. However, I would love to have another pair, and it would make use of all of these wonderful scraps that I have. Now with every project I do that's historical, I like to start with research. I don't always follow that research, but I like to start with research. And I was debating on how I want to put the patches together, and some places were like, oh, it looks like you whip them together, and some places looked like they were running stitched or back stitched together. I didn't really have a right answer, um, so I just kind of went crazy and did my own thing. And I couldn't figure out with the pictures on me from museums how they were backed, if they were left raw, or if the edges were just whip stitched. I had no idea. I figured I would back it with something, so I backed it with some linen scraps. It was overall a very quick and easy project. I finished it in like a day. I could have finished it in a day, but I was filming and it got late, so I probably, it actually ended up being a day and a half. But I found some really great examples of different types and with different techniques, and I have linked all of those in the description box. And if I ever reference any of them, I will put like a little, like a, a little um, number or letter here and that will cor correlate to the example that I'm referencing. So it's easy for you to use and I don't have to worry about copyright. For these patch pockets, they had to be kind of small. I can fit maybe my phone in there or like a wallet. They're not crazy big like my other ones, which is fine. I don't usually do events or anything very often. And especially right now, I don't have anything planned anytime soon. They're just pretty and semi-useful. I had to do a lot of guesswork with this, but I think my guesswork was fairly accurate and it worked. So if it worked, it worked. Here is the finished product. I don't know if I should show you this before or should show it to you afterwards, but it came out really cute. And I found that um, there's a lot of blues and brownie colors. So I used those as my color palette and I think it worked out very well. It's completely hands done with just random scraps from the stash. I used some white linen that was stained and drawn on and I put it on the back of the pocket and I used some light white blue linen for the backing of the piece part of the pocket. It is nice and sturdy. I backstitch all around the edges um, and hopefully this gives you some inspiration on using up some of your old swatches and gives you even more of a reason to get swatches before you order your fabric. Alright, so I think that's about it on the introduction, and so let's get right into the sewing. While most of the examples that I found had that variation on the quilt look with squares and triangles and a particular pattern, but I found a few that looked really interesting. There was one in the winter third that was appliqued rather than pieced, 
and it was really cute and great if you have odd little shapes or scraps to use up. In the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, there's this pocket in their collection, pieced in silk, and then embroidered on top with silk. The scraps are very fancy, and it's very interesting to see all the little bits and pieces. I chose to go the easy route and use a 2.5 by 2.5 inch square, assembled in alternating blues and browns. Now I encountered a new problem, how to put these together. Most of the museum collections online had bare minimum photos and I couldn't tell like what stitches were used and they didn't say in the description. But while looking at the Smithsonian website, I actually did find that their photos were good enough that I could zoom in on them and still see the threads making up the weave of the fabric. So I could actually see the outside of the seams. That helped a lot in trying to figure out what st stitches to actually use. So after looking at the seams, I gathered there was two main ways of putting these pieces together. I could either use whipping stitches or running stitches. I chose to use whipping stitches, but I didn't know if they should be from the outside or the inside. I took a bet on doing it on the inside, but one did throw me off. When I looked at it the first time, it looked like the run whipping stitches were done from the outside, but I couldn't tell if this was a repair or this was the actual seaming originally done. However, the more I look at it, the more I think that it may have just been done a little differently. Usually when you do whipping stitches, you go straight through the fabric. But I think on this example, the seamster or seamstress was went at an angle. I still don't know if they were done from the inside or outside, but I'm going to take a guess it was from the inside and maybe just the roll of the fabric and stretch of it over time forced the stitches to come forward a little bit. But I'm familiar with English paper piecing, so I did something similar to that. I folded over about a fourth of an inch, or as small as I could. Then I whip stitched over with small whip stitches. I did this until I finished the entire piece.
also wasn't sure how they finished the edges of the seams. Now, a lot of the wools that I had were prone to fraying, so I chose not to mess with them, rather line it. I took a thin linen from my stash, and then I used that to line the pocket, and a slightly heavier linen that was stained and messed up, and I used that for the back of the pocket. I decided to backstitch the entire thing, making the pocket back, lining and piece panel in a way that like it when I turned it inside out the raw edges would be in between the pocket panel and the lining. I also wasn't sure if I should bind the edges but there were some examples of them being turned inside out so I can imagine this is one way to do it. After this, I bound the slit in the top edge with strips that were a little too narrow. Then I added some linen twill tape for the strings.
so that's another project done. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was really quick and easy. Uh, whip stitches go so fast and I spent most of the back stitching watching Nausicaa with my sister. So it was relatively a painless and quick process. You may have seen a patch on the back of the white linen. I accidentally cut through both layers instead of just the blue layer. So I ended up patching it because I had already started sewing it. I didn't want to waste yet any more fabric. Um, I'm going to keep the scraps from the wool because I think I'm going to use it in another project as stuffing. Um, but that's about it. If you make your own piece project from the swatches you have laying around, be sure to tag me in them. I think that'd be great and I think we should be using more of our swatches in projects like this. If you want to see more of this content or follow along with my Waterhouse Ophelia Kirtle, then go ahead and subscribe and I will see you hopefully in the next month. I'm trying to upload about once a month because that's all my schedule can handle at the moment. But um, I'll see you then.